Oh, so you have an event coming up that you want to share information with others about. Well, you can close the Word doc. Today, I'm going to show you how to build this beautiful web page for your event within Walling, which you can do right now for completely free uh, and no design skills necessary. So let's go. All right, so we are going to start a new wall and I'm going to start with a blank wall. I'm going to go ahead and title this wall Creative Connect 2024, which is the name of our event. I'm also going to add a description to the wall just to outline the date and location of the event, which you can do by going to the three dots next to the title and going to add description. So it is August 20 through 22nd, 2024 in the heart of downtown. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and bold the date. So we can just do that by highlighting and hit bold. All right, before we get started with the guts of the web page, I'm going to go ahead and go into the wall customizations just to change some things before we get going. So we can edit those using the paint roller here at the top next to the name customize wall. First up, published wall. I want to make sure we have sidebar navigation turned on. For the colors, I'm going to leave the wall background to auto. The sidebar background, I actually want to make a light yellow because we are going to go for a pretty colorful theme here. So. That should be good. And then for the text, for the title fonts, we're going to go with Poppins. It's a nice wide font. And then body font, we're going to go with Inter. Then under miscellaneous, we can turn off the wall icon. And then we can go into the wall cover and turn that on so we can add a wall cover. It defaults to split right, which I believe, yeah, that'll work well for what we got going on today. So uh, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and change the cover photo. I think I'm just going to search Unsplash for conference. And I'm going to go with this one. All right, now that we got all that sorted, we can get started with the content. So the first section is going to be in the introduction section. So I'm going to title it about but I don't want the text to show up on the section itself. So there are two ways to go about this now. Um, it used to be just going into the customized section options and hitting turning section heading off. But now you can also go into the three dots here and turn it off here as well. But I do want to add a background color to this section though. So we're going to go back into customize section, uh, hit the plus on the background color. And then this is a nice purple-ish color, <laughs> but I want um, more purple than that. Okay, that should be good. All right, so we can pick our first template. Um, in case you don't know, Walling has quite a few different templates to get you started on the formatting of your content and the way it is visually presented. Uh, so let's take a look here and see if we have one that fit matches what we're going for. I believe the closest one's going to be this one, but we actually don't want an image, so I'm just going to remove that. So I'm going to put our mission statement here on the left side and then our full introduction here. Okay, about section is done. So our next section is what the conference is going to be about. We'll do what to expect. And for this one, I am going to keep the title there. So that is good to go as is. And then we can select a template. For this one, I'm going to go with the three bricks with images. And then we're going to do valuable talks networking, of course, and lastly, creative round tables. Okay. And I don't want a background on any of these bricks. So the quick way to get rid of all of those backgrounds, as you can see by this sort of outline here, click drag to select multiple bricks at once. And then we can go into the background, which is the same paint roller as the customization of the wall. Um, and then removing the background. And these photos are just going to be sort of aesthetic vibe photos. So let's do minimal plant. Because who doesn't love a minimal plant? Okay, I'm going to go with this one. And then this last one, I'm sort of wanting like an, a minimal abstract painting kind of thing. Yeah, this should do nicely. Okay, our next section is the keynote speakers, which we will also be leaving the title on as well. Um, and I do want to add a background color to this one. So I'm going to go to customize section, add a color. And I actually want to sample maybe this background color right here. Mm, okay, that's a good starting point. Okay, I'm good with that. First up, I'm going to pick a template. For this one, I'm actually also going to do the three bricks with images 
and headings, except this time I want to do four across. So we can change that by going up to the columns rocker up here and increasing the columns to four instead of three. And then I can just duplicate this brick right here and drag that right there. Now I do have headshots for all of my speakers. So I'm going to go ahead and upload that from my computer. So we've got John first. And I can just add his information, a little about him. I'm actually going to increase the height of these photos just to sort of get a good headshot for them. Maybe let's go for like a square look here. Then I think I'll increase the the panelist text from normal to large. Then I think what I'm actually going to do, instead of um, trying to replicate this formatting across all of them, I'm actually just going to go ahead and delete these ones and then duplicate this one a handful of times. That way we've got our formatting in place and we can just kind of quickly go. So I'm going to replace this image with our next speaker, Jane, and she is our keynote speaker. Next is Sarah. I can upload her photo. She is also a keynote speaker. And then lastly, Mark Johnson. And he is our final keynote speaker. Okay. And I'm actually going to leave the background on all of these bricks just because I like the way that it looks like, you know, kind of sort of individualizing each of the bricks and, you know, has like almost like a Polaroid effect to it a little bit. So it looks nice. Next section is the schedule which I'll also be leaving the title on. Um, I do want this background color to match our sidebar color. So I'm just gonna click that from our recently used colors here, which is super handy. And for this section, I'm actually going to do something different than what we have been doing so far, which is changing the section view, which is this far right option here. It's a drop down. There are a handful of different section views you can pick from. For the schedule, I am going to be utilizing the Kanban view, which is basically just columns that you can add bricks below. So for this, I want to outline all three days and what their day entails. So I'm going to add a third column, day three. So I'm going to hit new brick, I'm going to right click on it, remove the background, and then I can do Friday, August 20th. I think I'm going to make this a heading one instead. Let's see. Yeah. That's better. And then for the date, I'm actually going to change it from normal to large text as well, and also make it bold, which you can do with your keyboard, control B. And then I can add our schedule, but I'm gonna do two enters, sort of have one line break there, sort of spacing between the two. 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. is early check-in and registration. Looks like we actually still have large text on, so I'm actually gonna bring that down back to normal text. And then I'm actually going to do a divider between each of the time slots. So we can do that by doing one enter and three dashes on your keyboard, and it will automatically make a divider for you. 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. is a welcome reception, and that is all for Friday. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this brick just to keep all of our formatting. And then I can drag that over to day two to Saturday, August 21st. 8 to 9.30 is breakfast, 9.30 to 10 is keynote speaker, add another divider, 10.30 to 11.30 is a panel, another divider, 11.30 to 12.30 is breakout session, and then lastly, one more divider for our 1.30 to 2.30 breakout session as well. And as you can see, the Saturday one is getting pretty long in comparison to the Friday one, so all you have to do to sort of kind of, you know, balance that out. Um, is just drag this out some. And so you're sort of utilizing the page a bit better for the amount of content for Saturday as compared to Friday. Day three, so I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate Friday again, drag it over to day three, and do Sunday, August 22nd. Nine to 11 is a guided tour. 11 to 12 is a brunch, add another divider. 12 p.m. event concludes. Okay, schedule is done. Our next section is registration. For this one, I'm actually going to do a gray background color. And then I also want to hide the section heading. And here I want to actually embed an active Google map. So the way to do this would be to find your location on Google Maps. Um, let's say it's Summer 1 Vanderbilt. Um, 
and you are just going to copy the entire web URL of the location of your event and then go back to walling, double click, create a new brick, paste your link, and then I'm going to go ahead and delete the text, remove the heading, and then make this about that wide, and then I can remove the background. Then lastly, for this section, we are just gonna create a sort of a save your spot registration call to action. So I'm just gonna double click, create a new brick, make this the full width of the page, and then remove the background. Save your spot. Then I'm going to increase this to a title font, add a little bit of text about our event. And then I wanna add a button to our registration form. So to do that, we just hit the plus icon and then hit button. And then I want to do register now, register. And then I actually want to use that purple that we used above there, here again. So I will just access that using our recent colors and then we can hit save. We have a beautiful registration button. Next, I want to insert a divider, change that to a line divider, which you can do with the three dots next to it. And then add a bit more text. I'm gonna add our location again and an email for questions. And I'm gonna make this a live email link. So I'm gonna do that by highlighting it, going to the link button. And then to make it a link for an email, you do mail to colon followed by the email. And then so when someone clicks on this link, it will take them to their preferred email client with your email already input. Okay, last section is a very simple one, uh, which is our sponsors. I'm going to leave the title and then I am just going to drag and drop from my computer into walling all of the sponsors. And then make that the full width of the page. Actually, that might be a bit too big. So I'm actually going to increase the number of columns to five and then reduce that down by two, one on each side. Yeah, that's that's more appropriate. <laughs> All right, we are done. So we can now go back and hit publish, which is right at the top here, it's a little rocker. So we can hit publish. And as you can see, it says, this wall is private, publish it to the web to allow anyone with a link to view it. So let's hit publish to the web. And then we now have a live link for our event web page. And that's it, you're done. It looks great. And now you can share this link with everyone who needs to know about the event and they will have one place to go for all of their information and be able to register as well. So I hope this gave you some inspiration on how you can use Walling to create a web page for your next event. If you'd like to give it a try yourself, like I said, you can do it for free right now. If you want to tinker with this particular template, uh, it will be in the link in the description and you can give it a try for yourself. Honestly, there is no need to make sharing information more difficult than it needs to be. And Walling makes it super easy and super fast to make something aesthetically pleasing and very digestible and communicative for your intended audience. So that is all for me. Until next time. Have a good one.